event from going forward, and the fireworks Donald Trump wanted lit up the sky, a rush of explosions mimicking the tense climate in the U.S. on its birthday. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, Alexandria, Virginia. Frank Leon Roberts is the founder of Black Lives Matter Syllabus and a professor at New York University. He joins us now on Skype. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Roberts. Did July 4th bring up anything you, different Mary. for you yeah. this year? Take on any added significance or perhaps less significance? The 4th of July? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think, you know, one of the most ironic things about the Black American experience is that we have always felt like outsiders and insiders at the same time. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, the Black philosopher, he called this double consciousness. And so once again, we have a situation where Black Americans are being called to celebrate a nation that it has perpetually felt like we were outsiders from. And yet we've been here from the beginning. And so in that context, this uh, Fourth of July holiday feels different, but it also feels the same. Mm. What did you make of uh, President Donald Trump's speech at Mount Rushmore? Absolutely. Well, Kim, you know, I think it's important for us to, under to situate Donald Trump's speech as a part of a broader American story unfolding right now. What we are witnessing is a battle, a cultural war, so to speak, of two opposing forces, right? On the one hand, for the soul of America. On the one hand, we have the millions and millions of Americans who've been involved in the Black Lives Matter movement fighting for the principles of social justice. But on the other hand, at the exact same time, we also have millions and millions of Americans fighting for the preservation of white supremacy. Uh, and so I think we know which side of the fence Donald Trump resides on. Uh, and so I think that these two forces, which have always been at work in America, are only intensifying as we uh, draw closer and closer to election uh, 2020. How do you begin to engage people who are afraid of change? You know, you talk about white supremacy. How do you begin to, to, to talk to people who believe in that? Um, you know, how, how do you get change across the country? Well, a lot of talk right now in America about healing. How do we heal? But the reality is, Kim, we can't have healing until we have honesty. We can't have trust until we have truth. And the truth of the matter is the United States has always been a place where white supremacy is real. But the good news is it's also always been a place where people are fighting against white supremacy. But until we finally are, are willing to tell ourselves the whole and honest truth, not only about America's past, but also about America's present and how real white supremacy is in the present, we will never be able to transform as a society. How do you feel the move from protests to policy change to structural change to, to root out structural racism, how do you feel that move is going? Uh, I think that it's going quite well. I think in many ways we've accomplished more in 35 days than in the past 10 years. I mean, you look at the, the bill that uh, Congress has put on, the House of Representatives has passed, you look at some of the structural changes that you see happening to police departments in this country, change is happening. My concern is it's happening in the context where you also have 165 million Americans on lockdown. And my concern is once that lockdown is lifted, will we go back to normal, which means going back in many ways to a white supremacist status quo. What are your hopes for what comes out of the momentum that is, that is so obviously present in the U.S. right now? I think that we can, well, my, my hope is that America will finally become the nation that it wants to be. You know, James Baldwin, the black American writer, he used to say that black people, black Americans, love America more than any other place on the globe, which is why we insist upon our right to criticize her perpetually. And all the Black Lives Matter movement is doing is attempting to simply ask America to live up to its ideals. And so hopefully, if we can get a little bit more of that, if America can come closer to the ideals of freedom and democracy that it says it wants to stand for, then this will all have been worth it. Thank you so much for your time, Frank Leon Roberts there, uh, the founder of the Black Lives Matter Syllabus and Professor. Thank you, Kim.